and good evening. Welcome to today's OET writing um, All Stars event. I've got a feeling that this live video hasn't started. So um, <clears throat> let me just check on my tablet to see whether we are broadcasting. Yes, we are. Fantastic. Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's OET Masterclass. My name is Neil Harris, and I work for an OET premium provider called CELT, Centre for English Language Teaching, based in Cardiff. We're a premium provider for nursing and for medicine, <clears throat> and I also work a lot with candidates who are preparing for the UK Foundation Programme, Doctors Who Need an OET 400. Uh, I'll provide you with my email address at the end of the session if you wanted to be in touch. It's always great for me to know a little bit about who you are. So could I ask you please in chat, just to confirm the following information, your name, which country you are from, and also please, which OET test are you preparing for? Is it nursing? Is it medicine? Or is it one of the other OET subtests? That is always really helpful for me to understand a little bit about your context and your needs. So I'm just going to wait a few moments to start seeing the comments coming in. So we've got Manpreet with us, Kung Fu, Reina, Soluhana, Umar and Wada. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Ijaz from Pakistan, fantastic. Uh, good evening, Ijaz. Um, Jam joining us from Saudi Arabia. Hello there, Jam. Uh, Ijaz is a nurse, fantastic. Forgive me if I'm looking down slightly. It's just that I've got the uh, comments open on my uh, iPad just below the screen. Okay, so I'll um, just wait for a few more of those answers to come in. But whilst you're giving that information, let me just share with you the um, the agenda for today's session. So that's coming up on screen now. <clears throat> See quite a lot of you preparing for the nursing test. OK, that's great. So let me just explain what we're going to be looking at today. So the first thing I'm going to do, if you're relatively new to OET, is to talk to you about the OET test and the writing test in particular. What does it include? I'll then provide an overview of what the writing subtest is actually testing, which will help you to become more familiar with the test. But for the most part of today's All Stars event, we're going to be looking at ideas for managing your time and also how to check your answer in the remaining minutes of the 45 minutes that you have for the writing subtest. And there will be time for Q&A at the end, but could I ask you please to re um, restrict your questions to the writing subtest? Uh, I won't be talking about speaking, listening and reading because my OET All Stars will be helping you with those. And of course, don't forget that there's the OET All Stars recording library that is available via Facebook. <clears throat> so let's make a start. Let's think about OET and writing. So the writing subtest uh, is the third of the four tests that you take as part of OET. You'll begin with listening, followed by reading, and then writing. And the writing test lasts a total of 45 minutes. And in those 45 minutes, you'll be expected to write one letter based on some input. And that input is typically a set of case notes, which you then transform into a letter. Now, people sometimes uh, want to know how can they improve their writing? And in particular, how can they improve their writing for the OET subtest? Now, the big thing I think to say at this point is that if you want to be successful in OET, be it 
reading, listening, writing or speaking, is that you need to make sure that your language is at the right level. That's equivalent to an IELTS 7, 7.5, in order to have flexible language use. There really is no point booking your test until you have that language level. So if you're lower than that, my first piece of advice is this. Focus on improving your language, because that is what is being tested here. Remember, OET is a test of medical English, not of clinical skills. However, for the writing test, the other thing I'm going to really recommend is that you plan your answer before you start writing it. And I'll be showing you how to do that today. And then my third point is try to organize your time in those 45 minutes so you have the opportunity to check your answer for frequent errors and also importantly to check your answer that you've included all of the important text points um, before you finish. Um, I've included on the bottom of the screen, so I've just flipped forward there, so I've gone back to some links on the OET new website, oet.com. So we've got oet.com learn, and that is one of the options across the top of the site. And if you click on that, you'll find a page about preparation information, which is really useful. But you can also click through to the writing page, which contains lots of useful information about improving your writing skills generally. One thing I really recommend that you download if you haven't done so already is the ultimate guide to OET writing. This is available on the OET website. It's on that same page, oet.com forward slash learn forward slash writing. And it's an invaluable guide to what is expected in terms of the criteria against which the OET letter is marked, but also lots of really useful tips to help you to be successful. So do download it and have a read. <clears throat> so let's have a look now at the OET writing subtest. What is it testing? What does it require you to do? So <clears throat> the output, what you write, is a letter. And the guidelines for this are between 180 and 200 words. And we strongly recommend, or at least I strongly recommend, that you aim for 200. 180 can be a bit tough, but 200, great. A common question is, what happens if I write more than 200 words? The assessors don't count words. So 205 words, that's going to be absolutely fine. But what they do do is look for all of the relevant material being contained in the letter, but also check that you've not included anything that's unnecessary. So if we see lots of sentences with background information that is not relevant to the letter, you are going to be penalised in the conciseness and clarity criterion. Obviously, if you've got a letter that goes on for pages and pages, the assessor is going to see immediately that the letter is too long. So get familiar with how long 200 words looks like in your handwriting if you are doing the paper-based version of the test or for the, the computer-based version of the test, get used to the number of lines that is 200 words. And those 200 words start with the purpose paragraph, I'm writing to transfer, discharge, refer, right through to the final paragraph, which is typically where you ask your reader to do something. It doesn't include the address, the salutation, the subject line, or anything from uh, please do not hesitate to contact me. So it's the main content in the middle that makes up your 180, or as I suggest, 200 words. This is based on input material that you're given, typically case notes. And you'll notice in the bottom line on this slide that I put five plus 40. So the five minutes refers to the reading time where you start thinking about those case note information. 
You can't write anything, you can't type anything if you're doing OET at home or the computer-based version of the test. It's just reading time to become familiar with the case notes and what's in them. So <clears throat> what is the OET test doing? Well, I'll just pause here to give you time to read the paragraph in grey on screen. And this comes from the OET website itself. Okay, question coming in from Bilal uh, about the differences between referral, discharge and transfer. Thank you for that question, Bilal. I'll uh, answer that in a moment. Okay, so you'll notice that you're writing a profession specific letter. So doctors will write a medicine letter, nurses will write a, a nursing letter, uh, vets will write a letter usually about a pet, um, or in fact always about a pet or a, a larger animal. And it's based on the demands of your profession. It will be relevant therefore to what you do in real life. And that's a real positive I think of the OET exam. Nurses and doctors very often asked to do these three types of letter, referral, transfer and discharge. Let's just quickly check the difference. Imagine that your patient is moving away from the area where you are her or his uh, family doctor and moving to a new district. Is that a transfer, a referral or is it a discharge letter? They're moving. If you want to pop your answers into chat, transfer, discharge, or referral for that situation. What do you think? Uh, thank you for your question, FIBA. I'll come back to that in a moment about unknown and unknown. Anika, yes, thank you very much indeed. You are transferring the patient from your care into someone else's care. Um, but there may not actually be anything specifically wrong with them at the moment. They're going somewhere else. OK, the patient, um, you've been helping a patient who's been in hospital. The patient has made a good recovery and they are now um, going back to the care of their family doctor, who may be then looking after them in terms of ongoing wound management or medication um, monitoring. Is that a discharge or is that a referral letter? OK, so patient has recovered. They're now going into the care of the family doctor from the specialist. Um, and there may be some additional care that is required. Is that a discharge or a referral? Gloria got there first. Well done, Gloria. It's a discharge. The main carer is now uh, confident that the patient has made a good recovery and is therefore discharging them into the hands of someone who will complete the role, typically hospital to a family doctor uh, or into some kind of um, recovery situation, possibly in some kind of home. OK, so the last one we're left with is a referral. And that typically is from a uh, general medical specialist, like a family doctor, into the hands of a specialist because the family doctor lacks the expertise or the specialism. So a patient who has a preliminary diagnosis, but there is a need for this to be confirmed and further specialist checks to take place, that's your referral. OK, so I hope that asks uh, helps with that question. We all are also asked the difference between an unknown and a known patient. For that, you're going to have to read the case notes carefully. What is your relationship with the patient? Do you know them? Have you met them before? If they are a patient you've been caring for as the family doctor for a couple of months or even longer, then that will be considered to be a known patient. And this is also true, by the way, for the speaking test. Whereas if it's a patient who you've never met before, by definition, it's an unknown patient. You don't know them. You've not met. Hope that helps with that, that query. OK, thank you. So there are, of course, other letter types, um, typically for the uh, other OET disciplines. 
It might be an advisory letter for pharmacy um, or an information letter. What I would recommend you do is make sure you check the OET website. You've looked at the sample letters that are available uh, on the website for those different disciplines and familiarised yourself as a result. OK, so in terms of the format, as I said, you get the case notes or other related documentation. You read them for five minutes and then you write your letter. And just if you're new to OET, just a couple of comments about what happens after you finish the exam. The letter is sent to a minimum of two independent OET assessors. They're in Australia. They mark you against a range of criteria. And if you are looking for an OET 350, you're looking for a two in purpose and a five in the other criteria. If you're preparing for the, and I'm not sure if we have any foundation doctors with us today for the UK FP, for an OET 400, you're looking approximately at a three in um, purpose and then uh, fives and sixes as a combination. Aim for as many sixes as you can in the other criteria areas. OK, so let's move on and think about managing your time, which is the heart of today's OET um, All Star. OK, so here are your 45 minutes for your test. And how should you divide your time? Well, we know already that your time divide is divided by OET and by the invigilators on the day you do the exam, because for the first five minutes, the only thing you're allowed to do is look at the case notes, the input material. If you're doing the test as a paper-based, the invigilators will be making sure that you are not picking up your pencil because you can't touch the case notes other than read it and think about the information. Whereas on the uh, computer-based and OET at home versions of the test, you won't be able to type anything or highlight anything until the end of those five minutes. You will notice, however, on screen that I'm making reference to this thing called a task reduction. What that basically means is that you consider some of the key information that any OET letter requires. You need to work out who are you writing to? Who are you writing about the patient? And what relationships exist between you and that patient, known or unknown, you and the person you're writing to, do they know the patient already? Because if they do, then obviously there is no need to provide them with information that they already have. And then finally, once you've considered the relationships, you need to be thinking about the purpose of the letter. Why are you writing? And what do you want the reader to do as a result? And those typically give you the first and the final paragraph of the letter, the purpose, and then the request or the next steps that will take place. In the middle will be, and I like to think of it as a sandwich, purpose and next steps are your bread. And then in the middle, the filling of your sandwich is the selection of relevant information. So here you might want to consider for the task reduction, what are the key events and the key dates on which those events took place that you want to provide to your reader? And just to re-clarify, there was a question that came in on chat, 45 minutes for one letter only. You are not required to write anything other than that one letter, which hopefully makes things a bit easier for you. OK, now um, here's a set of case notes. This is the Peter Dunbar letter. Please don't worry if it's a bit small and you can't see it on screen. It's here for uh, illustration purposes only. But that is what you'll see on screen or what you'll have on paper in front of you in those five minutes. Now, if you're interested in this idea of the task reduction, then you can find out more about this by watching one of the previous OET uh, All Stars events, which in fact I ran a couple of months ago. 
If you go onto Facebook, and I imagine many of you are joining us through Facebook this morning, and you look for the Facebook OET, or you just do a search in Google, to be honest, for Facebook OET All-Stars, it will then bring up with something that looks like this image here. And you can then scroll down and see all of the OET All-Star events that have taken place recently. Um, keep scrolling down and then you'll see something looking like this. Taking a constructive approach to the five minutes of reading time. There's me in the corner. And this was a, a live class that I delivered a couple of months ago where I talk about this whole question of doing the OET task reduction, which is a recommended strategy from OET. Um, a question from Nimitha, uh, can I ask a doubt, is the phrase I'm writing to refer still acceptable? Yeah, absolutely. Typical ways of starting an OET referral letter are I'm writing to refer or thank you for seeing. Either of those is absolutely fine. I teach for OET nurses and doctors the phrase I'm writing to refer, I'm writing to discharge, I am writing to transfer. And then if it is a known patient, use that phrase, my patient, to indicate the relationship that you have with that patient. Hope that helps. Okay, so <clears throat> once the first five minutes are over, you can then start annotating the case notes. And I'm gonna show you on screen now how to annotate both for paper, but also for the computer-based and OET at home versions of the test. So what we're considering here is the information that you want to put into your letter. Some of it will be relevant, some of it won't. Now, if you look on screen here, you'll see, particularly towards the end of the case notes, lots and lots of double ticks. So this is for the paper-based version of the test. Notice, therefore, that the majority of the information that you will need to put into your letter often comes from the, or towards the end of the case notes. It doesn't mean that other things aren't necessary, you can see double ticks here and here, but typically the majority of the information you will need will come later in the case notes, just before the writing task. So what I recommend is that you tick for the paper-based version of the test, any information at quite a detailed level that you want to put into your letter. This is going to take you time, yes, but it will save you time when you start writing because you will already be clear about what you want to include. So we've gone from the reading time where you are thinking in your head what's necessary to then annotating on the case notes, the actual things that will go in the letter, the specifics. If the information is not required for the letter, you can either leave it blank on the case notes some people cross it out. Sometimes you're left thinking, well, do I need this or not? And in that case, I suggest put just a one tick for the paper-based version of the test, and then you can come back and think about it a bit more. But what about the computer-based versions, OET at home and computer tests? Well, in your planning time, there, what you should do is highlight. And what you have here is the same set of case notes, but instead of having the um, ticks, you've got the highlights to show you what you think should go into the test. Now, if we consider time, how long should you be spending planning your letter? Well, I'm going to suggest that you should spend 10 to 15 minutes of planning. And planning comes into two stages. We've seen the first one, the highlighting or the ticking on the case notes. And some people, when they first hear this, hold up their hands, oh, 
in horror. I promise you, as a teacher with 30 years experience of preparing students for all sorts of English language exams, and now years of experience preparing people for OET, my candidates who I always train, and when they send me their letters to check, I ask them to send me their plan, they all say to me, yes, this helped me to be more efficient when it came to writing the test, writing the letter itself. Think about it. When you're writing a letter in a second language, that's quite difficult. So if you're writing at the same time thinking, shall I include this or not? That means it's quite a lot of processing in your mind and you might miss something. So separate it out. Select the information that you want. Write a plan. And then write the letter. So typically you may not start writing the letter until 20 minutes into the test. So that's the five minutes of writing time, 10 to 15 minutes of planning time. Now I said that pl the planning stage, those 10 to 15 minutes is in two parts. And the first part is highlighting or annotating on paper what you're going to include. This is the second part. It's the writing of a plan. Now, the plan does not need to be long. It should not have complete sentences, but it should indicate the topic and perhaps the key information in each paragraph. What you have on screen here is a example plan for sample letter two the Peter Dunbar letter. And you can see one that's written on by hand and then one that's typed. They're both exactly the same. So <clears throat> I have indicated paragraphs with a arrow. That's up to you what you use. So I have my purpose typically coming from the writing task. I then decide for this particular letter, the Peter Dunbar nursing letter, I'm going to start by it giving information of what happened on the 22nd of January. I'm then going to look at the medication that the patient is taking as a result. And then I'm going to go back in time to key information between 2017 and 2018. In other words, the relevant information in the patient's medical history. And then my final paragraph, my next steps, what do I don't want the reader to do? Write the plan down. Don't try and save yourself time by remembering, remembering it in your head. Have it in front of you as a guide. As you're writing the letter, you might make some changes to it, that's fine. But as I say, doing things clearly step by step, reading the case notes in the first five minutes and thinking about the key information, the task reduction. 15 minutes, choose your relevant information, write your plan, means that when you're ready to start writing the letter after 15 or 20 minutes in total, you have a really clear idea about what you're going to write and the order that you're going to put it in and paragraphing it. Remember, this should be logical and therefore should be appropriate for your specific reader. There is no fixed paragraph structure for an OET letter. There's no minimum or maximum number of paragraphs. It's what works for the reader that counts. OK, so that then leaves you with, I would suggest, between 15 and 20 minutes to write the letter itself. This should be quite easy for you now. You know what you're going to include from the task reduction and from highlighting or annotating the paper case notes. You know the order of the information and what paragraphs to put it in. Now you can really focus on writing the best possible language that you can. And remember, 
keep it clear, keep it simple. This isn't an academic letter. Um, let me just check a question that's come in from Bilal. Okay. And um, make sure that you have written as clearly and as um, concisely as possible. Remember, you've got 200 words. Bilal's asking a question about spelling. Spelling is not a individual criterion in the OET writing test, but it will come up in terms of um, the, the language criterion, the final criterion. The occasional spelling mistake is not going to be a major issue. It will not, one or two spelling mistakes will not bring you down from one band to a lower band. It, um, it might affect you a little bit, but not dramatically. My advice would be, if you know that there are words that you commonly misspell, learn them before the test, and I'll show you that in a minute. Check your answer to make sure that words that are in the case notes are spelled correctly. American and English spelling color, O-U-R, color, C-O-L-O-R, not a problem. Um, there is one test that talks about the Ishihara visual acuity test, a color test. Um, and, you know, an American spelling is, is absolutely fine. So we're left then um, with some checking time. But before we talk about that, I just wanted to make you aware, if you're relatively new to OET, to some of the resources that are available to you. I've talked about the oet.com forward slash writing page. It's wonderful. There is so much information there. Plus, of course, the recordings of me and my OET All-Star colleagues. But also on the OET website are some really useful sample tests. There are sample tests for different um, types of test. So you'll see that for uh, nursing, um, sorry, for um, writing, there is in sample test three, a nursing letter, a pharmacy letter, and also a physiotherapy letter. There are lots of samples here. And what's really nice is that they are organized according to the disciplines that you are in, nursing, doctors, optometry, dietetics, for example, for some of the less common OET uh, versions of writing. And the trees, of course, is the same is true for speaking as well, by the way. But you also notice these images down here, that occasionally there is a video, which typically shows Rebecca from OET taking you through how to write that particular video. It's a really valuable resource. Please use it to your benefit. OK, so we then get on to the final stage about checking your answer. And this is something that I think should usefully happen in the last five to ten minutes of the test. OK, so if you've gone through these three stages, reading, planning and then writing, even if you use the maximum amount of time for all of them, five minutes for reading, 15 minutes for planning, uh, 20 minutes even for writing, you'll still have five minutes left. If you're a little bit quicker in the other areas, you may have as much as 10 minutes left for checking your answer. So how do we go about checking? Well, these are some of the things that I consider you should do. The first one is making sure that you've not left anything out in your letter. Remember, in the planning stage, on paper, if that's the version of the test that you're doing, you will have double ticked key information. You can go back to your case notes and check that you've included them. And this is how you do it. You read your letter. Mr Dunbar and his daughter presented today. Ah, attended with daughter. I cross it out. I put a line through it. So I look at the letter that I've written and I use the letter as my starting point to check is what 
to cross off in the case notes what's in the letter. Now you'll notice that I've written, and it's here in the middle of the paragraph, um, uh, he's resisted any changes to his diet and to taking his medication, which he is prone to missing. There we are, I've crossed off missing. But as I've gone through the whole paragraph, I notice, oh, I've not crossed through double dosing. So what I would then do is go back into my letter and add it. So he's prone to both missing or double dosing on occasions. And if I'm written, if I've done the computer-based version of the test, what I then do is I simply unclick my highlights. And if I'm left with any highlights, once I've read my whole letter, that tells me, ah, that's not in my letter. I now need to add it. So that's the first level of checking your letter, making sure that you've included what you want to include. It's very easy in a stressful exam situation to leave things out. But there is other things that you can check as well. And for that, I just want to quickly make you aware of the differences between errors and mistakes. On the left hand side of the screen here, you'll see that errors are related to things that you don't know in English. You don't know how to say it, you've not studied it. Or well, this is a idea that you can say in your own language, but you just don't know how to say it in English. You can't correct what you don't know. And therefore, it seems to me that there is no point trying to correct grammar where you just don't know. What you can do, however, is if you think, this doesn't look right to me, I, I don't know why, try and rewrite it, try to paraphrase it or to simplify it. Different, however, are mistakes. And mistakes relate to grammar, spelling, vocabulary, um, false friends that happen when we're tired, when our concentration slips, or just in the speed of writing that letter, you just maybe miss out a word. If it's language that you know, by definition, you can self-correct it. And this is the focus, therefore, of the second area of improving your writing focusing on things that you know you make as slips on a frequent basis. Now, here are some letters marked by me from some real students of mine. And what you can see in red are language mistakes that this candidate has made. He's invested in working with an OET premium provider, paid for lessons. And one of the advantages of doing that is that he therefore gets accurate feedback on his writing. And by analysing typically three or more letters, you can start identifying repeat mistakes. So, if you have a teacher, and this is much easier with a teacher than without, but you can still do it on your own, then look for your personal common mistakes. Now, what I've included here are things that come up a lot in OET uh, writing generally. The purpose hasn't been stated clearly. The timeline is not clear, maybe because the dates have been left out. Um, the language is either much too formal or it's too informal. Can I get, I would be grateful if you can provide as a bet or as a better, slightly more appropriate language for, uh, for example, a referral letter. Failure to expand notes. So you're keeping in your letter some of the up and down arrows for increase and decrease. Plus, of course, incorrect spelling incorrect tense use and incorrect use of articles, er, uh, un, and the. Get your own personal frequent error list. Learn it, and then in the test, in those final five to ten minutes, you've checked you've included any of the um, 
missing information and you've added it back in. And yes, Sulukhana, to go back to your question, you ask, if we missed any important point, can we add it at the last? How can we add it in the last 10 minutes? Yes, you can add it. Please do. You'll get extra marks or you won't lose marks because you left things out. If it's a computer-based version of the test, just click in and type in. If it's a paper-based version of the test, try and write in between the lines or put in an asterisk and then put it at the bottom and a line showing where the extra information comes to. You will not lose marks for having things crossed out or having things added. The examiner will be happy that you've checked your work and added the information in. So that's how you do it. OK, so you've got your personal checklist for your frequent errors. You read your letter and you ask yourself, is this tense right? Do you have a pr particular problem with, say, for example, the present perfect and the past simple? Or um, you know that you often misspell the word monitor. Uh, and you spell it with an E rather than an I, M-O-N-I-T-O-R. Read it. Oh, there's that mistake again. Correct it. So it's like having a checklist that you can use for your own writing at the end of the test. OK, so that brings us towards the end of today's um, All Star event. I've included here some information with additional help. If you wanted to take a photograph of this um, slide, then please do so on your mobile phones. This recording will be on the uh, list of most recent OET All-Stars in a couple of weeks, I think, maybe sooner. But there are sample test videos for nursing, for medicine. There are lots of other video resources Look at the writing playlist on the oet.com forward slash learn forward slash writing page. Plus, of course, as I've mentioned before, there is the OET writing guide, which is also available on that page. If you are interested in having lessons, then I can provide you with my um, email address that's going into chat in just one moment neil.co.uk we do charge for lessons you can see information about our oet courses at kelp.co.uk forward slash oet um and now let's just look at some of your questions and i'll be around for another few minutes if you have writing questions you'd like to ask um Bilal, you've asked about transfer referral discharge. I've already covered that in previously in the uh, risk recording. If you didn't miss it, if you missed it, then please go back and watch the recording and you can see it again. Um, someone told me that in a referral letter, don't mention all the patient history. That is correct. Could you tell me in detail? So in the task reduction, in your thinking time in the first five minutes, you are identifying the relationships. I think there is a sample letter, um, might be for nursing, where a patient has been admitted to hospital. Um, I forget what was wrong with him. And then he's now ready for discharge back to the nursing home from which he came. And you are asked to write a discharge letter making the nurse in the retire in the nursing home aware of what uh, monitoring and what wound management is required for the patient that obviously is new information that the staff in the nursing home don't have that needs to go in the letter mm -hmm. you don't need to include in the letter any information regarding the fact i think this patient had a walking stick um, you don't need to give information about the medication that he was on previously because the nursing home already know him and therefore you don't need to tell them what they already know. So the key to deciding what information is required is what does the reader need to know, what is not necessary because it's not relevant or what is not necessary if it's a known reader because they already know that information. Hope that helps. I noticed that there's a comment in from um, Lacra Miora uh, regarding the difference between those three types of letter. Let me just check that. 
Um, yeah. Okay. Um, just one thing there in that comment about f change from uh, the transfer letter. It's not necessarily that they're transferring from house to home care. They may just be moving area. So if I were to move from Cardiff, where I live, to London, then it may well be that a transfer letter is sent to my new doctor, making her or him aware of some of the medication and some of the ongoing tests that are happening to go alongside the case notes, which would be sent electronically. Uh, is the scoring criteria of the letter the same for nursing and doctors? Yes, it is, it is exactly the same. Do just check what grade you need. So uh, nurses in the UK need a lower mark in writing than doctors do. And depending on where you're going in the future, if you're changing country, make sure that you know exactly what the requirements are of the um, health board organisation uh, for UK, the GMC, the General Medical Council or the NMC, the Nursing and Midwifery Council. So you know what you need. Uh, Bilal, please check my inbox. Yeah, happy to do that. I'll do that after this All Stars event. OK. Um, all right. Yulisa, I keep getting a C on my correction. Um, Yulisa, it's difficult for me to comment now because I've not seen it. And what I would do is go back to your teacher, if you have one, and say to them, I keep getting a C. Can you please explain to me what do I need to change to get a higher mark? So it's not just about what you've done wrong, but importantly, your tutor should hopefully be helping you to see what you need to change to do better next time. OK, I think that's about it. I can't see any more questions coming in. So uh, I'll just wait a second or so. But if not, I'm going to wish all of you success in your tests. Um, do please keep tuned in to this page because there are OET All-Star events every week. We are here to help you. It's been a pleasure working with you uh, today. Thank you very much indeed. And um, as I say, success. Thank you, everyone. Bye-bye.